All right, so he came in with tinnitus, shoulder pain, can't stay asleep, just been beaten down, hasn't been able to work for three years, brain fog, just going to every doctor. And this is, let's show the first thing that we found. And as a matter of fact, I put this on the screen and said, see how long it takes you to notice it as I bring up the second screen. And I could, and it was probably like five seconds, three seconds, you pointed right at it. And there's this spur here, this mm -hmm. calcification of the posterior atlanto occipital membrane. And I'll show. Mm -hmm. So this is the, this is the thing that got calcified. So what happened is he's mm -hmm. worked as a mechanic. He got hit in the head by a spring that unloaded uh, catastrophically threw his head back, uh, a nasty whiplash from there. And there's a calcification of this, uh, membrane here and this anatomy shows it having plenty of room for the uh, vertebral artery on the right but that's not what you've got this spur is digging right into the vertebral artery uh, it's bordering it quite a, extensively and when you bring your head back when you look up when you turn your head to the left when you turn your head to the right it is just irritating that like crazy. Um, we did a physical exam and I mean, there's a few things going on, but when we touched right up in there, or you can even just imagine that artery is being swollen and inflamed. When we just dug in there, you said it was like the volume on your tinnitus went up and down like I was just playing with the volume switch. Yeah. Um, the exact mechanism uh, and why that does that to your tinnitus, I'm not sure. I've got a few speculations, but I'm not going to go into them now. I'm just going to, let's just show you what the structures are doing here. Um, so the blow to the head, and as you would think, there's some hypermobility going on in there. It does not, you're, you've got a, a nasty sprain to the upper cervical spine. Okay. So here we can see the distance on the left side and the right side versus the odontoid. Now the interesting thing here is, were you born this way or is this from trauma? Uh, the anatomy is a little different. You can see how indents there, that they're not perfectly symmetrical. And that word, that's where it gets a little tricky trying to determine uh, how to treat. Uh, today was a, we actually had a great outcome from the Atlas adjustment and some of the other things. Well, well I'll tell you what, let's, so what do we do? We adjusted the Atlas. Um, the jugular vein is being bordered by the atlas, so we see decreased venous outflow. Um, the other thing, we saw evidence of, uh, and actually the evidence was shown in the venous phase. Let me get that up. This is a good shot of it. So that same trauma that threw your head back, uh, we believe caused some strictures. I mean, look, look at there is some fibrous something digging into that jugular on that side. And actually, they both kind of deform down and through the, the, the bottom of the neck. Uh, the ultrasound levels speeds were a little high down and through here. Um, we did do some soft tissue work trying to break up any adhesions and pull that out, and you felt a lot better. We actually took the anterior compartment of the neck and pulled this out. It popped and cracked and made some sounds that we see from whiplashes where all this pulls back. Uh, we adjusted the atlas from the left and anterior. Uh, the, in a few minutes, I'll show you the slices that we took. So this is one of those where the CT scan and the x-rays, the atlas orthogonal x-rays, agree on how to adjust you. So that's nice when that happens. Uh, another little thing here is that we have collaterals uh, right here behind the, van the jaw. So one of the experiments is to uh, have a, a bite guard that holds the jaw forward. Last night we had you tape your mouth closed so you, at least the jaw is not opening up and interfering with some of this collateral venous drainage. Um, and I like that you're a mechanic so we can look at this thing mechanically and, and looking at the plumbing and just optimize it. We want everything to be optimized. Uh, you can look at a structure and see if it's not moving or working like it should. And actually that's what I was, that's where I was. We were about to, we were about to get into the, how this moves the hypermobility and just just think about the hypermobility and how that spur is going to 
uh, play out. And yes, in a moment we'll show you how it looks like it's being tethered. It looks like it's being attached here, and when you turn, it's being pulled. The, the artery will go up and down um, and get uh, constricted. All right, so let's look over here. This is left head rotation. Uh, with, with left head rotation, the skull rocks significantly, and let's see if I can get a better shot of that. Well, you can kind of see, you know what, I've got better still shots of this. But basically, you can see how much of, of the joint surface is coming out um, and how it gets close over there. And then if you compare it to the other one, let's see, this is looking from the front. You can see there's still a space in there and it's really not that much of an issue. And there were many locations in your neck that we show that shows left head rotation is where you're vulnerable. So I think when the spring hit you in the head, your head went off to the left a little bit and and sprained it there. I'll tell you what, let's pull up these still shots. They communicate the best of, of these imaging. Okay, there's the spur. Uh, there's another angle of the spur, an oblique angle. Um, here we have some of the scar tissue or strictures down at the base of the jugular vein that we pulled on today. Um, oh yeah, there's another little angle. Uh, and actually the, the valve in there should be checked out too. Uh, that could be injured. Uh, there's a beautiful shot of that stricture. Uh, there's the atlas digging into the jugular there a little bit. And another little shot of, of a stricture on the opposite side. Good views there. Good views there. All right, so then this is the alignment. We drew a line through the center of the frame and magnum, and then we added the atlas, add the atlas to it, and here you can see that the atlas has gone to the left and anterior on the left, and it's approximating the left jugular. And when we move that, I mean, I'm, we're very pleased with your results. I know you're feeling a lot better, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Oh yeah, this is another shot. Look at that spur, how it comes around to that vertebral artery. It seems to not interfere with it pretty quickly. Um, another shot. All right, so we have the ligament flavum that's digging into the back of the cord. We have disc injuries in the front. And that can be have a bit of a tethering effect to where when you bring your head around, it pulls on the cord. Uh, that's been documented with other people, so we know that it does happen. Um, I know there are doctors that uh, talk about doing prolotherapy to tighten up these ligaments and th to pull the ligament and flavum out. I know there's uh, surgical corrections where they put a spacer in the lamina to bring the, open, a, open that canal up. I know there's artificial discs that they put in there that I think they're getting good at these days uh, to open that up in the front. Uh, so I saw, to me, this looks like cerebral spinal fluid pooling in the top of the head. I, I think your venous drainage is compromised. Um, and I even saw a little bit of a motion artifact in there uh, when it comes to the brain. And the brain can shake and move. Um, all right, so this is the left head rotation and right head rotation together. So you can see how the joint surface comes out from the skull too much, how it approximates there. With left head rotation, you're vulnerable, turning your head to the left. Uh, and one of the things is that you'll have some days that are bad and some days that, that are better than others, and you ask yourself, what did I do? Well, my current working diagnosis, a day where you do a lot of left head rotations, uh, you might aggravate this thing because you have that spur that's tethering the vertebral artery uh, and the excessive motion, it's a perfect storm to have a whole bunch of symptoms that aren't gonna be readily understood. Um, yeah, that kind of speaks for itself. Another view of it. Significant difference between there and there. Okay, so this is where that vertebral artery is this is what made me think it's, it's tethered because here you can see where the spur is. 
This is a left head rotation. You can see how this, this slack is pulled tight, tap down tight, like you would think. And then when he turns his head to the right, it bows up. The vertebral artery goes up through here and puts a big arch in there as if the spur is holding it there and not allowing it to, the slack to go through the whole thing. Um, Yep, there's another view of it being pulled down tight and then lifting up. Uh, okay, um, there you can see how far the skull slides in on the atlas here and not there uh, with left and right head rotation. You can, that's a pretty good shot of that. I try to get a decent picture of a uh, left and right head rotation on this vertebral artery, how it bows up and bunches up, and then it has, actually picture didn't really do it justice. That's kind of a good picture. Right, so with left head rotation, where, where is the ligamentous compromise? Or where is your prolo doctor gonna wanna inject you in your PRP? Okay, so here, excessive movement, C1 comes off of C2 too much. Uh, this joint capsule looked like it's uh, wedging, actually a couple here, so injecting these with PRP, prolo in the back, tightening things up. Mechanically, you just fix everything you find, you know? Um, yeah, I was really just thinking another shot of the how the skull rocks over there and the atlas and the odontoid don't seem to move too much to each other. Um, and you do have some calcification in there. I think it's the apical ligament and where the skull meets the atlas is, is, your, is really the one that moves too much. Again, oh, here's another shot of, of the, where the ligament of flavum is digging on the cord in three locations and how these discs look a little worse for the wear. And structure affects function. So you fix your structure your function is going to get better. Um, oh, we did ultrasounds before and after, and that was, uh, we really did like that result. But really, the thing that we like the most is how do you feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel better. I feel uh, lighter on my feet. Um, breathing a lot better. Seems like I can, without, uh, without trying, I can breathe better and uh, fuller breaths and. Um, it's easier to hold my posture so I don't have to fight to get my posture how it's supposed to be it's kind of already there so good that's what a chiropractor wants to hear but the hero of this day is going to be the guy that removes that spur and we did get on the internet and and there's some surgeons that are going after those spurs and, and seem to have great results uh, this is the atlas orthogonal x-ray that seemed to agree with a CT scan as far as the vector uh, so that's always nice Anything I'm missing? Anything you want to talk about? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, shoulder pain. Uh, that. Oh, yeah, that was a good point. We knew we were going to forget that. Yeah, yeah. Right, so your shoulder pain, when you, when you put the weight, you know what, let's bring that shot up. Uh, we put a weight around your neck to, to facilitate the curve, and that took your shoulder pain away. So let's go 15 pounds there, 8 pound here. Uh, right. So with no weight, this is what your curve looked like. And one of the things that we do with the, at, with the weights is to, we want to see the atlas come back we want, because the jugular sits in front of the atlas. So we want to bring the curve back and open up that uh, jugular vein. Here's with just an eight pound weight. You can see how much further back it comes. Uh, it really did pivot off of there. But the interesting thing is that your shoulder pain went away as soon as we put the weight around you. Um, so again, that whiplash, the nature of it is that, you know, you put that pressure there, that load there. Um, I think it's going to help you heal and move the right direction, help the curve come back. That's it.